Now in the specification, um, it says that this section should be looking at the modulus of functions and the reciprocal functions. Now I'm just going to be focusing on the reciprocal functions because um, the modulus of functions I looked at in the previous section. Okay, uh, so I'd just be duplicating myself. So um, this section we're going to be looking at reciprocal graphs. So the idea is that given an f of x, you should be able to sketch 1 over f of x. Now, it may be the case that you aren't necessarily given the equation of the graph. So you might not be given the equation f of x, um, but it might say that y equals f of x looks like this. Uh, you need to draw y equals 1 over f of x. Okay, so the idea is that from the graph you should be able to identify what the reciprocal graph would look like. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's look at the basic example and then in the following videos we'll ramp this up. So let's say uh, f of x was, so let's uh, let f of x be something basic like 2x plus 1. Okay, and what we're going to do then is say um, sketch y equals 1 over f of x. Okay, so let's just go with a linear graph and now it's the reciprocal of a linear function. So what we'll do is we will sketch uh, y equals 2x plus 1. Okay, so here's y equals 2x plus 1, that point is 1, and that point is going to be minus 1 half. Okay, now the point of this is that um, if you know where the original function is crossing the x-axis, then that means when x is minus 1 half, f of x is 0. If you've got 1 over f of x, then at that point you've got 1 over 0. So any point where your function crosses the x-axis, you would have to have a vertical asymptote. Okay, so that will have, we know that 1 over f of x will have a vertical asymptote at x equals minus 1 half. Okay, now what else can we say? Well, this part of the graph here is positive, okay, because it's above the x-axis. So that means that 1 over a positive value will be positive. So I know that my y equals 1 over f of x will be above the x-axis here. And likewise, because f of x is negative here, 1 over f of x is going to be negative, And so 1 over f of x must be down here also. OK, so we can build up that kind of picture just looking at the positive and negative nature of the original function. Now, when x is 0, so I mean, I could write, I haven't actually written down what 1 over f of x is, of course. OK, but it's easier than spot, OK, well, when you've got x is 0, you're going to have 1 over whatever that value is, where, it's where the original function was crossing the x axis, sorry, the y-axis. So you've got 1 over 1 in this case. So we know that the curve has got to go through that point. Now, if I'd had y equals uh, 2x, uh, 1 over 2x plus 3, so my original function had been 2x plus 3, then I would now be crossing at y equals 1 over 3. OK, so it'll always be 1 over the y-intercept as to where my new function will be crossing the y-axis. So I know that it's going to be crossing through that point. Now, at this point here, OK, which is very close to when x is minus a half, our value of the original function will be close to 0. So if you've got 1 over something that's close to 0, you're going to have a very large number. So 1 over f of x must be very large. And so it must come in from that direction. And as my x value increases, f of x is increasing. So 1 over f of x must be decreasing. 
So it must be decreasing past this point going that way. So we'd be looking at something like this. And it has to remain above the x-axis because it's positive there, because the original function is positive there. OK? Then, down here, when we're close to minus a half, but just to the left of it, we've got a small negative number. 1 divided by a small negative number, value that's close to 0, will be larger, but negative. So we know we're coming in from this direction. And as x gets more and more negative, then our 1 over f of x function will get closer and closer and closer to 0, 1 over a larger and larger number but still negative. And so, it must look like this. So, the 1 over f of x, the reciprocal graph, is governed by the behaviour of the original function. Now, we were just looking at a very, very basic one here. OK, y equals 2x plus 1, f of x equals 2x plus, 2x plus 1. But... What we're going to be doing in the coming videos is looking at what happens if f of x was a quadratic. What if it was a cubic? Okay, what would our, our new function, our reciprocal graph function, look like then?